I've always been fascinated by space. As a kid, I would draw planets daily. At night, I would stare up at the stars and constellations with wonder. As I grew older, my passion for the night sky did not fade, but much like the universe, it expanded. I experimented, I attended science camps, I watched videos about crazy things like black holes, quasars, and solar wind, and for Christmas one year, I got my first telescope. It took a while to get used to. I remember one time, one night, I spent 30 minutes trying to view the moon, readjusting and refocusing my telescope to no avail. I then realized that I hadn't taken the dust cap off. But in time, I learned the ins and outs of my telescope, and eventually, I was viewing some of the most amazing things I had ever seen. One night a few years ago, I decided to go outside and see if there was anything interesting to view. I redirected my telescope, refocused all the lenses, and when I looked in the eyepiece, I was taken aback. It was Saturn. There it was at the other end of the telescope. It didn't even look real, it was so amazing. That was when I knew I had found my passion. I've spent hours of undisturbed time under the night sky, staring at the stars and imagining what wonders they possess. But when I tried to view the Orion Nebula with my telescope, I expected to see this. But what I did see was nothing, absolutely nothing. I would also find it strange seeing awe-inspiring pictures of the night sky that looked like this. But the night sky that I knew looked like this. Later, I would find out that my disappointment in the night sky was due to something called light pollution, which is the excessive use of artificial light at night that floods the sky and causes dimmer objects such as nebulae and galaxies to vanish, leaving only a few bright stars left. This past summer, I went to the Florida Keys, away from the bustling city and its harsh lights, and I witnessed night like I never had before. Countless stars, beautiful nebulae, and the unmistakable Milky Way filled the sky, illuminating the sea without any artificial source. This made me realize just how polluted the sky back home was. Sadly, due to the increasingly devastating issue that is light pollution, much of the world has never experienced a true night sky in their entire lifetime. In fact, 80% of all people live in areas experiencing light pollution, which is 80% of all people on this planet who will probably never experience a true night sky in their entire lives. Light pollution is caused by the excessive use of lighting outside, like street lamps, billboards, wall lighting on homes, landscape lighting, and bright city lights on buildings. Light pollution is measured using the Bortle scale, from one being an excellent dark sky, think of places like Grand Canyon and Death Valley, to nine being the inner city, like Chicago, LA, New York, and Birmingham. For reference, Mountain Brook is located in Bortle 7 and 8. More than $3 billion are wasted in the U.S. alone from light pollution annually. This wasted light is coming from way too bright billboards, street lamps illuminating more than the street below, decorative lighting outside of homes and on landscapes, rest light from restaurants and businesses in cities, and tall skyscrapers. By fixing light pollution, we can save tons of money wasted each year. Light pollution not only affects the economy and stargazing, but it is also harmful to the biosphere as well. For example, baby turtles use the moon to help guide them to the sea after they've hatched, and the bright and confusing artificial light that now pollutes our coasts misleads them and causes death and havoc among turtle and other species populations around the world. Bird migration, another vital environmental process, is deeply disturbed due to light pollution as well. With estimated millions of birds dead each year, from hitting buildings, going lost, and getting hungry because of light pollution. Light pollution not only affects wildlife, but it affects humans as well, in that it negatively affects our health. According to the International Dark Sky Association, light pollution increases the probability of developing disorders like obesity, diabetes, depression, sleep disorders, and even several types of cancers. By fixing light pollution, we can reduce the probability of, getting, of developing these disorders. Light pollution can be dangerous in other ways as well. Billboard lighting and roadside advertising uses bright and confusing artificial light, and even a quick glance at these sources of light can disorient and even temporarily blind the driver, which on top of oncoming headlights and traffic signals is incredibly dangerous on major roads. Because of these sources of light pollution, it may seem impossible to fix, but everyone can make a difference. By using inexpensive and manageable solutions, we can all reduce our light pollution and live in a better world. Remember, everyone can make a difference.
You can start by one, using motion sensors for lights outside so that they do not waste energy when you are not using them. You should also remember to turn off lights when you are not using them to reduce the overall amount of light leaving your property. Another way to reduce the health consequences of light pollution is by two, using warmer light colors. Warm light at night is significantly less damaging to our eyes than cooler light is. Electronic devices like phones and TVs emit lots of blue light at night. And simply setting these lights to red or yellow or using the warm fil light filter on your electronic devices can reduce the impacts of light pollution on your health. In public places that experience light pollution, you can three, research the light pollution ordinances in your area, if there are any, and speak with the city council and local government agencies on the inclusion of nighttime artificial light ordinances and whatever is being done to enforce them. Informing your government is an important way to call an issue to attention, especially if it is one that not many people know of. And four, raising awareness is key to solving this problem because the more people that know, the more people that can contribute to solving this problem and implement solutions that combat the adversity of light pollution. Entire cities have come together and implemented solutions to combat the adversity of light pollution. For example, Gulf Shores, Alabama uses smartly placed and warm colored streetlights near the beach so that humans can still use public spaces at night so not to disturb the environment we share with plants and animals as light towards the red wavelengths is less damaging to natural day and night cycles. Asheville, North Carolina, home of the famous Biltmore, restricts the amount of light a business and restaurant can use at night. Even Paris, the famous city of lights, has restricted its light use. Each of these solutions is easy and manageable, and everyone should consider doing at least one of them because everyone can make a difference in stopping light pollution, even if it is a small one. As humans, we need to come together and stop light pollution. Unlike other forms of pollution on the planet, light pollution can be fixed with the flip of a switch, literally. <laughs> Let's embrace the beauty and wonder that lies in a night sky illuminated by stars instead of artificial light and work together to reclaim our night skies in places that have lost them. I urge you to join local initiatives and support organizations that combat, the adverse, that combat light pollution, such as the International Dark Sky Association, and engage in conversations about light pollution by speaking with friends and family on this important issue. Remember that you, as an individual, can make a difference to stop light pollution. By fixing light pollution, we will not only be allowing more people to enjoy the beauty of the night sky, we will allow more people to become interested in it and our place in the universe. Thank you.